Amen. Well, I'm excited about today. I haven't been in the pulpit in so long. I kind of feel like it's my first time. So I'm doing good. So before we get going and before we receive an offering or do anything else, I just want to tell all of you guys, you're the best church ever. I love you and I thank you. I'm going to ask my new wife to come up here, Helen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm just going to let her greet you and say whatever's on her heart. We haven't planned anything. I just asked her, I said, would, would you come up? She said, I would just love to. And I don't want to. I don't want to start trying to say things that I'd have to keep explaining and take a long time to explain. But I want to just say this. If things had went the other way with uh, my late wife and I was in heaven and she was here and if she just got married and then the man comes up here, I wouldn't know what in the world to think in heaven if everybody out there thought that guy's going to be like Pastor Larry. It's not going to happen because I'm me and PK was PK. Can I get an amen? And so I'm excited about Helen being in my life and being my wife. And we're looking forward to it. We're believing God for some years, good years, healthy years to do the word, raise Noah. We've got a lot of stuff going on. But at the same time, I'm wanting to welcome her into our family as Helen. And she has a great, great history. It is tremendous. She works with RTF, Restoring the Foundation Ministries. She's a trainer in that. She trains the people that teach. And she's an amazing minister of the gospel. I told her yesterday, I said, I know you're not a pastor. You don't feel called a pastor, but you're definitely a minister. She says, I know that I am. And she is. She has a powerful voice. She knows the authority of God. To the point that she does remind me of my late wife sometimes when my mouth goes the wrong way. And she'll stop and say, of all people. And I'm going, okay, straighten up, Larry. All right. So thank you all for giving my sweetie some time. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. I love that. Everybody should be able to get cheered for at some point in their life. So thank you all for cheering for us more than once. We've stood up here and you all have... Woohoo! So that's a great feeling. I love that. The first time I ever came here, I was welcomed so warmly and beautifully. First in the parking lot. I think Arvid and Wendell were the first two people who ever greeted me and gave me a tour of the church, and it was wonderful, and I felt very welcome. And then, of course, I walk in the door, and there's lovely Dolores, Cheryl, who did such a beautiful job. Del Jerisha, I mean, so many people. Rebecca came up to me pretty soon. And I just remember the very first time I came here feeling so loved, genuinely loved, and so welcomed. And that makes such a difference. I think every one of you have walked into a strange place before, and uh, it's not always comfortable, but it's so different when all of a sudden you just feel embraced. And I think that's why I kept coming back. Thank goodness I did. <laughs> So thanks to you all for making me feel so welcome, I kept coming back. So I just want to encourage everybody, you know, sometimes we think the greeters have got it. But if you ever see someone you don't know, uh, take it upon yourself. And I know you do. I'm preaching to the choir because you do that already so well. And, you know, I, I do feel so much that so many of you loved Pastor Kathy and had deep, long relationship with her and I think it's just been amazing the way you've welcomed me so I just want to say thank you for opening your hearts and making room it's probably weird especially initially to see Larry with somebody different but you never made me feel like an outsider so I just mostly want to say thank you for the way you've welcomed me and I look forward to getting to know you spending more time with you we've been a little bit selfish for a year and a half so uh, we're gonna get back more engaged right Amen. yeah <laughs> We're going to stay married and engaged. Oh, yeah. That's Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Engaged with yeah. Amen. Mm. Well, I love it. Well, thank y'all for giving her some minutes. If I turned her loose, she'd blow your mind. She is loaded. All right. Love you. There'll be time in the future for that. I'm going to hang on to it while I got it. Amen. Are you guys ready to give into the kingdom? Yeah. Amen. Father, we want to thank you so much for your goodness in our life. We thank you for how you provided for all of us in so many different ways. And some of us, you've given great jobs. Some of us, you've caused to create them and be employers. And, and oh God, you just do so many different things in so many ways. But first of all, we just want to acknowledge we love you. 
The tithe we give today is not out of an obligation. We give it because we trust you, we believe you, and your word is true. You said that if we gave a tenth of our income, you said that you would bless it to the point you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. They wouldn't be room enough to receive it. And Lord, a bunch of us have still got room. And I thank you for doing a great work in their life and pouring these blessings out. And now, sir, we ask you to receive it. And we give it with thanksgiving and joy. And we thank you for your blessings. And everyone said, amen and amen. Ushers, would you come forward, please? And while they're coming, I'm going to just ramble for just a moment, if you don't mind. But it's, uh, I was going to teach on the power of words today. And as I was getting into it, I saw something that was just really, really, really cool about the name of Jesus. And I thought, boy, this is so powerful. It's all about words, his name. And so we're going to minister on that today. And I'm going to enjoy myself. I believe you will too. But I'm going to enjoy myself in the Word. There's nothing will give you life like the Word of God. Nothing. We've tried it all. We've done it all. I wish that I'd gotten born again earlier. I was 24 years old. And boy, I wished I'd have been four. I really do. My little boy's five. And he knows the plan of salvation. He's got it down. He'll tell you in a minute. You just need to ask Jesus to come in your heart. And he will. He'll just, and he will. <laughs> so God is good. And I am so excited about being back. I'm excited about being married. And I'm excited that I'm still breathing so that the hope that is in me can be preached to a whole bunch more people that need some hope. Can I get an amen? Y'all so funny. Well, this is going to be so interesting because all of us have heard a lot about authority. And authority in the name. And authority in the name of Jesus. And that's what I want to talk about today because... God has given us his name. Helen and I just got married, and she can prove it on a piece of paper that her name is still Helen Talmage. It's on paper. But right after Talmage, there's another name. It's Souls. She didn't lose anything. She gained one. I don't know why some women think when they get married, they lose their name. No, you take on a name. When I came to Christ, I didn't lose my name. I gained a name. He gave me his name to use in the earth. And now, being born again, bought with a price and paid for, and has an inheritance, and God has given me a name that I can use in the earth, a signature that I can sign on everything I've got to do. And it's the name is Jesus. It's the Messiah. It's Yahshua. It's all authority and all power is in his name. But in his name, words must be spoken. It's not just knowledge. It's revelation that is decreed. Re what is a revelation? N to know. To be so simple about it, a revelation sounds like it's, it's a thousand dollar word for the word to know something. And the Bible makes it so clear that the revelation of the kingdom of God does not come by eyesight. It has to be by a revelation. And that knowing has to come from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit who knows all things will show you all things. He won't hold anything back from you. Can I get an amen? And so I'm going to be most of this or all of this, I believe, out of the passion. And I'm going to start in Acts chapter 3. And I'm actually going to probably read most of the whole chapter. Just to, nah, I better not. I guess I better. Well, yeah, I might just do it. I get so excited sometimes that what, what you, my mouth's saying, what my brain's hearing, and you're hearing it, and I probably need to learn to stop doing that, then you won't know what's going through my brain, and then I can just talk. You okay? Okay. Well, one afternoon, afternoon, Peter and John, they went to the temple for three o'clock prayer. You're supposed to pray at three o'clock. So as they came to the entrance called the beautiful gate, they were captured. By the sight of a man crippled from birth, he was carried and placed at the entrance to the temple. He was often brought there to beg for money from those that were going into worship. When he noticed Peter and John going into the temple, he begged them for some money. And Peter and John looking straight in his eyes of the crippled man, he said, look at us. And expecting a gift, he readily gave them his attention. And Peter said, I don't have any money. 
but I'll give you this. I get tickled. I heard a preacher preaching that one time. He said, see, they were broke. They were broke. They didn't have any. These were poor apostles, poor disciples. I heard that. Preaching poverty, all of them. All he said was he didn't have any money to give him. He said, I don't have any money, but I'll give you this. <laughs> By the power of the name of Jesus. Did you hear that? He said, I'll give you this. I'm going to give you something. By the power of the name of Jesus. The man's expecting something. And I love that because at least he was in expected. That's why we don't get sometimes. You need some expectancy in your life. Amen. He thought he was going to get some money. But he got something money couldn't even buy. That's what he got. And by the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he says, stand up and walk. Peter held out his right hand to the crippled man as he pulled the man to his feet. Now that's having some faith. You pray for somebody and then you jerk them up. And as he pulled the man to his feet, suddenly power surged into the crippled feet and the ankles. The man jumped up. He stood there for a moment, stunned. And then he began to walk around as he went into the temple courts with Peter and John. He leaped for joy and he was shouting praises for God. Ooh, I can tell him a church he better not do that in. Anyway, when all the people saw him jumping up and down and heard him glorifying God, they realized it's the crippled beggar that had passed by in front of the beautiful gate. Astonishment swept over the crowd. They were amazed over what happened to him. And Peter says this. Whoo, you, you better have some faith and confidence that God's got your back when you're going to talk like this to a bunch of people. Dumbfounded over what they were witnessing, the crowd ran over to Peter and John who were standing under the covered walkway called Solomon's Porch. Standing there also was the healed beggar. He was clinging to Peter and John. I don't blame him. If I was born crippled and I had to beg for money and one day somebody said, in the name of Jesus, arise and stand up and walk, and I got up, I probably wouldn't leave them either. Hello? Clinging to Peter and John. With the crowd surrounding him, Peter said to them all, People of Israel, listen to me. Why are you so amazed at this healing? Why do you stare at us? We didn't make the crippled man walk by our own power. We didn't do it by our own power. Our authority, the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, has done this. For he has glorified his servant Jesus, the one you denied to Pilate's face. He's telling them. They're, they just watched the miracle and they're amazed and he's letting them know. This is the one you killed. You turned him in. You crucified him. You did this to him. Watch. But he's not chewing them out. He's bringing a revelation to them. He says, the only one when you, when, excuse me, the one you denied to Pilate's face when he de decided to release him. And you insisted that he be crucified. You rejected the one who is holy and righteous. And instead, you begged for a murderer to be released. You remember Barabbas. And you killed the prince of life. But, I love this. But God raised him from the dead. It's like, ha ha, y'all thought you killed him. And we stand here as witnesses to that fact. Now you're going to understand why that beggar really got healed that day in the name of Jesus. Because these people were destined to hear this. And here's what they heard. As witnesses to that fact, faith in Jesus' name has healed this man standing before you. It was faith in the name of Jesus that got the man healed. Peter and John both made it real clear. We didn't do this. It was the faith that came from our ancestors, our forefathers. The, the God of our forefathers is working in us today. He's not with our forefathers and gone with them. He has received our forefathers and he's still with us, which means our forefathers are with us too. 
And so he says, faith in Jesus' name has healed this man standing before you. It's the faith that comes through believing in Jesus' name that has made the crippled man walk right in front of your eyes. That's what made it happen. The name, the name of Jesus. We've got to learn to speak it and to use it more than we've ever used it in our life. I haven't watched TV in the past couple of weeks. I've been busy. But I'm going to tell you this. The other day, when my wife picked up her cell phone and found out just a little teeny bit after Roe versus Wade had happened and that it had been turned back. I guess y'all got to know about Roe. You do know about Roe versus Wade, correct? I mean, I've been gone. I'm just assuming everybody knows. Yeah, it ought to be a yay and an amen. You know, I'm not going to argue with people that's against it. All they don't have the revelation that it's it takes life, and it takes life against will. And even though women would stand up and say, "I have a right to do what I want with my body," yes, you do. But there's no human being has a right to take the life of a child in the womb or out of the womb. Yeah, it is your body. But let me tell you something: you used to be in the same position. You was in the womb. You was in the belly, and you were being formed. So what's the difference between you and your child? Well, I'm not going to get into all that, but I'm just saying, as soon as that was over, Helen said, whoa, the, the Dow just really bounced up big today. I mean big. And at the end of the day, she said, man. That th and Helen said, makes me think God's about to bless America again because America's starting to make some right decisions again. Can I get an amen out there? Woo! The name of Jesus is going to make America strong again. Can I get an amen? Let's go to the book of Mark in the 16th chapter. Oh, man, I tell you. I know y'all not mad at me. You got the screen up there, and I'm trying to read the book. This is so cool because this is a, a great commission that Jesus has given to them. In verse 15, it says, Mark 16, 15, he says this to them, as you go into all the world, preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel. Wonderful news. He didn't say, go tell people that if they smoke a cigarette, they're disgusting. He didn't say, go tell people if you drink too much, you're going to hell. He never said all of that. He said, preach the gospel of the kingdom. Lay the hands on the sick. That's what we're supposed to do. All that other junk is religion man-made are y'all okay listen to what god said he said preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race whosoever believes whoever believes the good news and is baptized will be saved and that word saved is the greek word sozo it means to be healed delivered protected preserved and made completely totally whole in your spirit your soul and your body that one word means all that hallelujah and whosoever and you don't have to if you don't want to you know believing is a choice and whosoever does not believe the good news they'll be condemned that's not God being mean to you the truth is this the good news came to deliver you from being condemned if you don't believe the good news you're not condemned because God's mad at you you're condemned because he came to to get you out of it and you rejected it and what he's just telling you if you don't accept this you're back to where you were destined to go I come to get you out of it I come to set you free I come to give you healing and strength and peace and prosperity until I receive you back to myself that's what God said and for some reason we think that dying is a lack of faith my Bible tells me that all the men that walked in faith it said they died in faith just go read Hebrews chapter 11 Read about all the men of God. It says, and all of these died. All these men died. And it says, in faith. That's the way to go out. What's faith? Faith is believing in the unseen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. God's kind of faith is in his word. When you hear it, it builds your inner man. You have to shut your mind down because your mind will start going, no, nah, no, nah, that can't be so. It's a little impossible to me. You have to shift your mind over to all things are possible to him that believeth. If you don't believe, there's not much possible at all. It takes faith in life 
to live above and beyond the natural realm. The realm that pulls you down and puts you down and cuts you down. Faith elevates you. It's exponential. It, I mean, man, it's like a rocket to the moon. It'll get you right out of the pits in a hurry. I, when we got born again and found out what all faith would do, it started. that's what we started doing. We were literally so poor. Didn't even realize it. Well, I was believing God for socks because I needed socks, much less other clothes. But we did. And I remember praying and I said, Lord, I'm going to start releasing my faith. I need some socks and I'm not going to go buy them. I'm not even going to buy them. I need some socks. And lo and behold, Ray McAwee, this is like, gosh, 40 years ago. Ray McAwee, of all people who just went to heaven three weeks ago, he comes up and gives me a bag full of socks. And I said, what's that? And he said, I, don't, I just, I have them. I don't wear them. And I thought about you. He said, here. Well, he had no idea. I wish he was here today because I never told him. He had no idea. I had been going, I believe God for socks. I just want to see if God's going to do this for me. He didn't just give me some socks. He gave me a big bag of socks. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm crazy. I sure am. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Because I remember when I was just as normal as a whole lot of people, how miserable I was living a normal life. I love living a supernatural life by faith. Hallelujah. I do. Life is so good. I still go through all the same feelings and emotions. You ever lost your cell phone? How do you feel when you lose your cell phone? All right, don't tell me. I'll tell you. Well, about nine months ago, I lost my cell phone. And when I did, I said, God... I said, somebody's got to find my phone. They got to see it. I'm going to just keep calling it and have them answer it. And I did, and somebody answered it. And they said, yeah, I heard this thing ringing. And I, just, I said, well, where are you at? I'm coming. So I went and got my phone. A couple of days ago, I left my phone again. And I'm riding with Helen. I said, Helen, we've been down in those streets and Banner Elk, sitting on those benches with all those people. And I'm holding all these bags, and I've left my phone somewhere. We were heading home, so we turned around and went back. She said, you just walk up and down those streets and look on those benches. And so she dumped me out and took off down the street. And I'm, well, don't laugh yet. <laughs> and so I'm looking, I'm looking for my cell phone on all the benches walking down the street. And my mind is saying, you know somebody stole that phone. You know somebody got it. And then it's all cracked up anyway. I keep saying I need a new one. And so then I'm thinking, well, maybe this is God's way of making me just get a new one. I'm going to get a new one. And I went through all that, and finally I said, no, I remember last time I lost my cell phone. <laughs> I, I remember I said, just keep calling it. And so Helen kept calling my cell phone, and this guy answered, and uh, he said, I'm sitting here on a bench, and this phone's vibrating, so I answered it. Where are you at? And he told us. So I went straight there, and so she lets me out to go to him, and she took off down and got to him before I did. So by the time I got there, she's already got my phone, and this, and this, I mean, listen, stuff like that's crazy. You lose your phone in a crowd of people in a city and it's busy and you leave and you come back and your mind's saying everything that everybody's mind would say, but your mouth still agreed with God's will in your life versus what all those negative thoughts were. And lo and behold, just somebody calling me and I mean, answering the phone was just the most wonderful relief. Like, Holy Spirit, you're just the most awesome. You're just awesome. I mean, isn't he? He is. And it's a he, not a it. He's a he. He's not it. Whew. And these miracles, the good news will, if you don't believe the good news, you'll be condemned. In other words, you're condemned without it, period. With it, you're not. And these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues and they will supernaturally, will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking any deadly poisons. And if they lay hands and, and they will lay hands on the sick and heal them. After saying these things, Jesus lifted up into heaven and he sat down at the place of honor, the right hand of God. And the apostles went out announcing the good news everywhere. And the Lord himself consistently worked with them 
validating the message they preached with miracles and signs that accompanied them. Isn't that awesome? And then over in 1 John, let's run over to 1 John kind of quick here. Y'all not mad, I can tell. I'm so glad to be back with a bunch of unmad people. All right. 1 John, here we go, chapter 3. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. The Lord is so good. We're going to go down to 1 John 22. And I want you to listen. This is so awesome. He says that, I'm going to, it's not on your screen. I'm going to back up the verse 21. My delightfully loved friends, when our hearts don't condemn us, we've got bold freedom to speak face to face with God. Isn't it true? When you're living a life that is holy before God, you have a great boldness face to face with God. And we've got to understand God gives us all that. We've had man teach us that we're so nasty and so much sinners that even after you get saved, they still teach you that you're still a sinner. And I know y'all have heard that. I mean, you hear, they just stomp it. We're sinners, we're sinners, we're, sinners. we're all sinners. Yes, we were all born in sin. Paul said we were all sinners. And Paul said when you get saved, he said you become a saint. He said, Paul said himself, I was a sinner. And then he makes it clear, I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. Yes, I was a sinner. How do I know? Because I sinned. Why would I want to call myself a sinner now? I've been forgiven. I've been redeemed. I'm set free from it. And I don't live in it anymore. I've got news for you. I can sin if I want to, but I am not a sinner. Have been, but I've been delivered from it. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. And if a preacher or anybody else out there wants to remain a sinner for the rest of their life, it's not a heaven and hell issue. It's a revelation of how you walk in freedom in the earth or not. I'm not talking about going to heaven or hell. I'm talking about walking in God's authority or not. So, hallelujah, where was I? Whatever we ask of him, we receive because. You ever said because to anybody? Did you have a reason behind it? Because we keep his commandments. And by our beautiful intentions, we continue to do what brings pleasure to him. I'm not a sinner making God miserable. I'm his son bringing pleasure to him. And you are too. You need to know he's enjoying you more than you realize. You think because you mess up or you hit your thumb and you holler damn when you hit your thumb. Oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry I said it. Well, I'm glad your heart's that tender. And I'm glad it bugged you like that. But that's not a heaven and hell issue. That's a hammer and thumb thing. And we do. We make mistakes. We knock something over. We break something. You know. That's not sinning. Sinning is a willful transgression against what God said. That's a sin. And you're not doing that, are you? Of course not. Your beard looks good. Now, what's this? I love it. We continue to do the things that, that this brings pleasure to him. So these are his commands. This is the commandments that we continually place our trust in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Completely, as a, I'm commanded to trust in him. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad you commanded me to. I don't have a choice. I trust you, Jesus. God said, trust you. So I do. And that we keep loving one another. Isn't that something? All I have to do to do, obey his commandments is trust him and love you. That erases the sinner element. Trust him, love you. I'm not a sinner. Sinners do not trust God. They don't. That's why they're in sin. And they do not love you. And by the way, loving you is not my emotion. The biblical loving you is I will treat every one of you the same. Love is what you do in the Bible. Like is how you feel. Anyway. So he says, we put our trust in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we keep loving one another just as he commanded us. 
So do you, do you see the simplicity of this? What we ask of him we receive because we keep these commandments and we have these beautiful intentions that brings pleasure to him. And these are his commandments that we trust his son, Jesus, and that we love each other as he's commanded us. What he's saying is if you're trusting Jesus and you're loving your brother and sister, the power that is in the name of Jesus is all yours. And if you'll use it, it will work. You want to see? Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. I love this. This is so good. I'm going to back up a little bit. I know it's sitting on your screen, but this just hit me. I'm going to start in verse 6. He existed in the form of God, yet gave no thought to sizing equality with God as his supreme prize. How yeah, about that? That was his prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. That means lower nature. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man. See, that's God in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God Almighty who created everything you see. And he himself, that's why the virgin birth. Because the blood had to come from God for you to be delivered. And the virgin birth, if it would have been a man that got Mary pregnant, you would be a sinner because we're all sin by nature, from the nature of the blood, the blood of Adam. So now through the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm a partaker of a divine nature. Now I've changed in who I hang with. You become who you hang with. I used to hang with the enemy, not intentionally. It was just fun with the people I knew in the parties. and I just went the wrong way thinking I was having fun. But, well, let me do, I better move on. You guys, I got so much to read and you don't even know I do. Let me do this. <laughs> and y'all not mad at me, I'm sure. All right. By reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant, he became human, humbled himself, became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man, and he was obedient. He was a perfect example. Even his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. And because of that obedience, watch this. Because of that obedience, God exalted him, multiplied his greatness, that's you. You are his greatness multiplied. He has now been given the greatest of all names. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone one day submit to this name. In the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. Every tongue will proclaim in the language that Jesus Christ is Lord, Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God the Father. All of this with his name. He has the greatest name of all names. And there's only one thing that's above his name. Does anybody know what that is? The word. He says himself, the word's above my name. So the word of God is the only thing that's above the name and the name is the authority to use the word of God. Are you all right? Well, let's just jump right over to Ephesians so I can try to hurry up and get you guys out of here. Let's run to Ephesians. Hope that's close by. That's it right yeah. Thank you, thank you. The Lord is so good. Going to Ephesians 3. And I want you to listen very closely to these words. I'm, it might not be on the screen of this verse, but I'm going to go with 14. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. The perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. I pray that he would unveil within you 
the unlimited riches of his glory and favor. Are you hearing this? Do you see how man has gotten so carnal even in preaching in our pulpits across our country? Of, they don't even preach stuff like this. They wouldn't even read it. It's, it's too glorious. It's amazing what God has done. I mean, you and I used to be on our way to hell. We were no good, our own righteousness, no more than a filthy rag. I could go on it. And now, who are we? We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because of his shed blood and what he did for us. And we accepted it. And now what are we? I'm the head now. I'm in charge. I'm not the tail. That means the rear end or way back. It does. Deuteronomy 28. You are the head, not the tail. You're above only. And you are never, ever beneath. Never. You might feel it. But you're not. Why? Because God said you're not. Ha ha. God says we're not. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor with supernatural strength. Flood your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. That sounds a whole lot better than getting up and saying, well, Lord, I got today to do. I blew it yesterday. Now, don't help me. Don't help me as much as you did that other fellow because I'm not worthy of it. What is wrong with us? Man, dude, worthy. Listen, old Larry Souls, the, pe the one that people remind the new man of all the time. I only lived 24 years before I got saved. I've been saved almost 45 years. I still hear about the, my sins. Still. Larry Soul, oh man, you're talking about a dude that did some drugs and partied hard and rode bikes. Hey, man, he's a, he's a, he's a, that. They still say that today. And you know what? They do you too. Because we're all the same. You changed. God touched you. Something's happened. But old friends and family, they always remember the past. They don't understand your experience. They didn't give it to you. They can't take it from you. You have to walk in it. And you've got to love them through it and win them over. Can I get an amen out there from somebody? Glory to God. I'm trying to finish, but... I still got one more place to go after this. Can y'all hold in for one more place? Please do. You've done without me for two weeks. You can give me 45 minutes. Well, I'm just going to read just this little itty bitty tea tad more of it. And then I'm going to stop on, on the Ephesians. Then by consistently using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. My God. Then, these, I hope you understand, he's talking about being empowered with the name of Jesus. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences. The great magnitude of astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions how deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. An extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you. And accomplish all this he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination he will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ and all that will be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. All right, now I'm going to give you your last one. Can you go to the book of John with me? I might tell you all a secret. I have to see about this. This is pretty cool. Verse 22. Might not be 22 on the screen. Might be 23, but listen. So you'll also pass through a time of intense sorrow when I'm taken from you. And you will see me again. He's talking to his disciples and he's explaining to them that he's going. And then your hearts will burst with joy and no one being able to take it from you. 
Don't you like that? No one can be able to take it from you. Now watch this. For here is eternal truth. When the time comes, you won't need to ask me for anything. Now look, the time comes, he's talking about his crucifixion. All the way up to the crucifixion, you can ask him. After the crucifixion, he's making it real clear. You don't ask me anymore. Don't ever ask Jesus to do anything. Because he didn't come here to do it for you. He come here to show you how to do it. And he gave you an inheritance of his name so you could use it as he did. His name is so powerful. I was just, just reading the other day. Well, it was yesterday morning. I was just sitting outside just reading in the Passion. And I was enjoying John 16, 17, and 18. And I was getting the part just before Gethsemane. You remember when Jesus, they come to get him? And Judas was with them, and he brought a whole army. I mean, like tons of soldiers. And you remember how they said, who, who, where is he? He heard him, and he said, I am he. And they all come gathered around him, and they ask him again. And he said, I am he. What happened? Whew. Soldiers and all hit the floor. Bam! That's wild, isn't it? They said, we're looking for Jesus. He said, I'm he. And they all went out under the power of God. And then, then, and then they get up, get their stuff together. And then one of the guards goes and grabs Jesus. And what happens? Peter pulls his sword out and whacks his right ear off. And what did Jesus do? He rebuked Peter. He said, man, you don't know what manner of spirit you have. Peter's thinking, are you kidding, man? The guy's going to go kill you. I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> And Jesus picked that ear up and stuck it back on that man's head. Now, wouldn't you think that a soldier that just lost his ear and had somebody stick it back on and it's fine, he would have a hard time dragging that fella to a crucifixion. So I know in the minds of a lot of, a lot of those that were there, things were going on. That had to be soldiers going, what are we doing? Even Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. You know who crucified him? The people. The priest, the religious people, and the people of the community crucified him. Not Pilate. He even said himself, I can't find any wrong in this guy. And he said, I can't. And they said, crucify him. He said, I'll turn him over to you. So he washed his hands. For here's an eternal truth that when the time comes, you won't need to ask me for anything. But instead, you, and where it says you, put your name right there right now. Right now, just put your name. And say this, Father, mm, mm, mm. are you hearing me? You will go directly to the Father and ask him for anything you desire, and he will give it to you because of your relationship with me. Until now, you've not been bold enough to ask the Father, or God if you will, for a single thing in my name. But now you can ask and keep on asking him and you can be sure that you will receive what you ask for and your joy will have no limits. I could just keep reading, but I'd probably burn all your time up today. But I have, I, this word eats me up. I just love it. I mean, it just gets in me and changes my thinking all the time it never changes i never stay the same i'm always changing god's always doing something in me carrying me to another place of revelation uh something about him and it's it's just him and we have got to get to the place that everything we do our worship is about him i love worship but i can sing a lot of songs that's all about me me just me and god but mostly me christian songs that we love and you know, and how I walk and the trouble I go through. And, and we do a whole bunch. But when you start just worshiping God and it's about him, to him, through him, here's the way he's receiving it. We are his sons and daughters and he sees every one of us as he does Jesus. You go in John 20, 20, you'll see that. He lets us know he loves us just like he loves Jesus. Jesus said, as my father has loved me, so have I loved you. Which means God loves you just like he does Jesus Christ. You ever get the revelation 
that you're not a worm anymore. You're not a bomb sinner. That God washed you, cleansed you, strengthened you, gave you a name and gave you power. Man, start walking in it and acting on it. Because if you don't act on it, you'll never, ever, ever believe it. You got to act. Have you ever been around people that are just plain sick and talking it? And you could have just very easily said, do you mind if we just have a word of prayer with you? I'd like to just lay my hands on your shoulder or hold your hand. We'd just like to just pray for you and let God touch you. You'll be amazed at the people that'll do it. Every once in a while, a no. Mm -mm. That's rarely happened, but it happens. I've actually had somebody cuss me when I was going to pray for them one time. The devil does that to get you to stop from praying for people. I took Mike Stroud out. We're knocking on doors just witnessing. And, and we, he knocked on the door. I said, you try that one. He knocked on the door. The old lady opened the door. He said, hi. He said, I'm Mike Stroud. And I go to the shield of faith. She slammed the door. Bam. And he turned around and he looked at me. <laughs> he, it didn't work for him like it did me. He couldn't figure that out. <laughs> Bless his heart. He wasn't ready to go to the next door after that one. So the enemy slammed the first door on him. He went to the next door. And they opened the door. They invited him in. He started preaching to them. They got saved. It ruined him. He, Mike Stroud's still ruined. He's still getting people born again. I just talked to him the other day. He called me because I got married. And he's all fired up. Y'all remember him? The burning bush. Oh, gosh. He had an afro. Who ever seen a white man with an afro like that? Lord have mercy. That boy was something, wasn't he? Mm. Mm. Stand up with me. You've been sitting too long. And if... If you got a little pain in your back or something or it hurts to stand, just sit. It's okay. There's no condemnation to those of us that walk in Christ Jesus. And when we have a problem or a pain or something, it's okay. We'll just pray one for another that we may be healed. We do do that, don't we? Pray one for another that we may be healed. And y'all look so good out there. And I tell you, I'm like, I can't wait for y'all get to know Helen better. I'm going to tell you, when she opens her mouth and that sword of the Lord comes out of her mouth, it cuts. It's sharp. So you better be ready because I'm telling you, her tongue stays on God's coning stone. You know what that is? The sharpener. The sharpener than any two-edged sword. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of the name of Jesus. And I release the power of that name in this room. And I thank you, Father God, that every person under the sound of my voice, it reminds me of when I was in the army. I would like to play the company commander. And I have my company standing before me ready for combat. And Heavenly Father, I thank you for the authority that you've given us. And I release now the anointing that you have given to this ministry and church on the people that are standing here. I thank you when they walk out of those doors, they are going to be equipped with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to move through them, to pray in the Spirit, to pray in tongues to lay hands on the sick, to minister and to speak life and health and peace to their friends and relatives. Father, there's some here that are not educated and they haven't done it. Oh, and six months from now, you're going to be so far with God, it's going to be amazing. It's going to astound the people around you. These are the days that God has been waiting for. The closer it gets to the coming. Listen, Christ is to stay and remain into the heavens until all the prophecies are fulfilled. And then he's coming. Hallelujah. And he's coming for what? A victorious, powerful church with no spot, no wrinkle. Glory be to God. You know why? Because he ironed the wrinkles out and he washed the spots out and he did it himself. He did it with the power of his blood and his name and he gave it to us. And by the blood of Jesus, I'm free. And by the power of his name, I have authority. And I release it on every one of you to go lay your hands on the sick. And you tell a devil, get out. He'll get out. You don't have to say a sentence. You don't have to say a paragraph. You don't even have to scream. Just say, get out. And that sucker can't stay. Father, I give you praise, glory, and honor for all of your goodness today. I thank you for the power of your word, and I pray the revelation of it get off on your sons and daughters. I pray that they get bold as a lion. I pray, God, that they'll get bold on their jobs, minister to their employers, just pray for the place they work, and it'll prosper. I thank you for promotions to come to the body of Christ. It doesn't come from the east or the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. And God, we thank you so much that you're the one that oversees our life and makes the Decisions, and we give you glory for it. We thank you and we praise you. And church, say this with me, everybody out loud. If, if you're visiting and you don't go to church, I wish you'd just say it out loud with us and listen to this and see what you think about it. Quote this with me. Say, oh God, I ask you now to forgive me of all sin. And right now, I want Christ 
come in my heart. Deliver me. And from this day forward, I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you can really say I meant that, that's all God wanted you to do was say that and mean it. I'm telling you, your words cause him to come down in your heart and your life will never be the same again. Can I get, and keep your heart cleansed. Amen. Mr. Wendell, do you have something to say?